Today we are in the verge of a very important moment in Indian history. Chandrayaan-3, aka Vikram, is all set to land on the south pole of the moon, a feat which no other country other than India is trying to accomplish. With all the views, all the eyeballs focused and wishing for a continued success of ISRO, it is all the more important to remember the person who took up great strides in building this institution, starting the institution, ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, a pioneering institution which is trying to accomplish a feat which not even the world, most developed nations of the world have been able to do. The man behind it is none other than Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, a person from a privileged class, born into a wealthy family, educated in London, had all the opportunities of going back or living and continuing the lucrative lives in the developed world at a time when India did not have enough to feed its own citizens, at a time when India was not self-sufficient, at a time when the literacy rates were very low, at a time when we were just getting rid of the colonial past. It is at this moment that Vikrasam Sarabhai chose to come back to India look at the long horizon of a 75 years from then to come on and started the space program, who stands as an inspiration, even at a, at a time after the 75th year of independence, which conti who continues to inspire people who want to solve the problems for the society in India. He always has been an inspiring person. He has set up institutions. Name anyone it would be Vikram Sarabhai behind him. Starting from IIM Ahmedabad, ECIL, of all the major achievements, ECIL is the one that supplies machines that allow the, the e-voting mechanism in the country. The only country that has been so successfully scaled it up to an extent of implementing democratic processes, taking away the entire process of booth capturing, which otherwise was a dominant facet of Indian democracy. Going ahead with it, if I start numbering and naming the names, it would be a too long a list. Here we are going to talk to Dr. Malika Sarabhai, the daughter of Vikram Sarabhai, on who the person was, how was he as a father, and what was his values and virtues or how did he want the nation of India to develop. Dr. Malika Sarabhai, known to all of us as an activist, actor, dancer, but more importantly, she earned her PhD in organizational behavior from the very institute her father has founded, the IIM Ahmedabad, who has done a pioneering research and work in many fields, but well known to the people. We're just going to start straight away to hear from her about her father. Welcome, ma'am. So the first question that I would like to ask you is, uh, could you tell us why the space lander, or you could say the moon lander has been named Vikram? And how do you feel about it? Um, great joy, expectations, sense of fulfillment. One had heard so much about Papa's dreams and that it is in some ways a culmination of something that he imagined over 50 years ago when nobody was imagining things like this and nobody was thinking that India would ever have the capability. Uh, trepidation and a sense that by landing on the South Pole we are actually doing something for the entire human race. It's not about us or India or about the scientific community but it's something that is a step for the humanity. And I think that is important to remember in a time when we are so filled with violence and hatred and, and a race against each other rather than a race towards the best. And I think Papa's life was about racing towards the best of what you could do rather than racing to defeat somebody else. It was a race to win and not a race to defeat. And I think we should all remember that and the spirit of that, the spirit of the fact that everything Papa did in science was for the betterment of humanity. 
it was never to show off how powerful we were or how clever we were or how deft we were or, or any of those things. It was always, always for the betterment of the last person. And I hope that in this, what I hope will be a moment of success, we remember that and rededicate ourselves to that one important thing in life. So I, I think it's an amazing uh, thing that Vikram Sarabhai continues to inspire generations and generations is going to inspire many people in the future too. But uh, if I were to ask you, what would be the memory, the first memory that you might get when you think about uh, Vikram Sarabhai? His smile and his curiosity. As children, uh, he, he, you know, we, I was born at a time when India was not able to import anything and you didn't have uh, the kind of toys and gadgets and so on that children today take for granted. So every time Papa or Amma went abroad, they would bring us back a new mechanical toy. Uh, and Papa would bring it back really to figure out how it worked. So he would come and officially give it to us. And then immediately with screwdrivers, he would take it apart to see how it worked. And then he never had the time to put it together again. So I remember these roomfuls of toys, which we could never actually play with, but were there. I mean, we knew. So it was really funny. I remember him bringing back what must have been one of the earliest precursors of, uh, of, of uh, an early computer or a word processor. And my brother Karthike and I spending hours with this little blue box with white paper coming out and, 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 and the excitement of that and, and then going with Papa to see the first large computer in the United States and it was as big as a room. Uh, but the other very clear memory is, of course, of my irritation with my father when he would be babysitting, my mother would be on tour and Papa had to look after me. I was the younger one and uh, I would come back with some homework that I couldn't figure out. And I'd say, Papa, please help me. I don't know how to do this maths or this physics thing. And he would say, uh, Malika, darling, just sit down and breathe. And I would say, Papa, what's the point of breathing? I'm telling you, I've tried it and I can't do it. And he said, darling, just breathe. And this would go on and I would get more and more agitated, more and more irritated. And then after like 10 breaths, uh, he would say, darling, you know, if your teacher didn't think you were capable of doing it, she wouldn't have given it to you as a homework. So breathe. <laughs> so, it was a mixture of great fun. Also of going on picnics where Papa always cooked. He loved cooking and he had this little gas stove and he would make uh, an aluki sabzi, which was his favorite. And uh, lots of things like that, going into Kashmir with him, going riding. These were the early years. These were the years before the world took him over. Wow. So one one more question that because uh, it appears that he wanted you all to re-engineer the stuff, look back, hack into things, break things down, rebuild it. I think he was uh, trying to teach you from a very early stages of breaking things down, look at, go to the bottom of it and look at it. It's an amazing thing that uh, he was trying to teach you. But uh, one important thing that uh, we want even the other generations, also, other people also to know is, what were the values that you think they were try your parents were trying to instill among you? Justice, truth, honesty, self-dependence, and always working for the less privileged. Always. That education was our capital. Nothing else mattered. We came from privilege. We had to be the voice of the voiceless. We had to be the ones who extended our knowledge to open windows in dark lives. Never saying this, but both them and my larger family is always doing it. And the greatest joy for both Amma and Papa was not getting an award, but of somebody acknowledging that their lives had been touched. And over the years, hundreds of thousands of people have come to me and told me stories of how Papa and Amma have touched their lives in ways that they will never forget. And I think 
his wonder and curiosity at life that everything could be made beautiful and if it wasn't beautiful it was up to us to make it beautiful for everybody that's really good to know but uh, one important curious thing that we all always felt was you see now that there might be some push for uh, 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 if you look at uh, for uh, the indian ecosystem to evolve etc but the last three decades they i would rather say that the whole of the generations were only looking of going uh, the brain drain and the common argument has always been that brain drain is better than brain in the drain but we see that people like homi jahangir baba vikram sarabhai they were educated from the privileged sections of the society had the opportunity of learning things from learning things from the best of the institutions they were very much settled in abroad why did they choose to come back to india where we see that there are very few opportunities for scientific research in india at that time and also the resources we see the first rocket that they were just trying to launch it they were carrying carrying it themselves on a bullock cart so i think we were we would just want to know and i think a lot of people would be more curious to know of what made vikram sarabhai to choose and come back to india i think patriotism and nationalism have become very dirty words today they have become words that are connected with hating the other whatever the other might be but i think hobi and papa and many people like that truly wanted to build a nation that was fair and just and that allowed dignity for every last person and they felt that they had the way with all to do it that they didn't have to worry about where the next meal was coming from and you know like the famous tale of christ going off and gathering people to come back for his mission papa used to go abroad and convince the bright young minds uh um, to come back and kiran karnik is one of those but there were many many more and he had a belief in him for the future of india that could inspire people to feel that yes i can be part of a nation that is being built i can be somebody who, with whose hands this country will stand tall I think that idealism has gone away that commitment has gone away and as I said jingoism has taken the place of nationalism I often ask myself what would papa's reaction be to the world that we live in today I like to think that had he not died so long perhaps perhaps history in India would have been slightly different because it was a time when politicians believed in people like homi and papa didn't think they had a hidden agenda didn't think that they wanted to slash away money anywhere knew that these scientists were giving up otherwise very very exciting and lucrative careers to devote themselves entirely to building a country and building a vision for a country that they understood that you couldn't put science on a back space and say in 10 years i will invest in science and technology and pandit ji was somebody who totally believed in them uh and and back to them today the level of mistrust and 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 suspicion and corruption are so high that i don't know what people like that would have done today honestly but again uh, it's uh, we always even think that when we start working on we from the free software movement start working on a certain issues for the indian community we hardly see the indian big businesses or anyone really investing in solving the hard problems of the society so we continuously try to draw inspiration from people like uh, people like vikram sarabhai homi jahangir baba and others but i still wonder do you think that it was important for us 60 years back in the dawn of very independence to focus on a space program when india did not have the resources and uh, where we were really strangled with resources and do you think it was important because anything that we are celebrating today uh, actually 
all the foundations the thought process the work culture everything has been uh, sowed by them long back what do you what do, what do you say that was it important for us to invest so early i think it's the one thing that has saved us today the fact that there was an investment in a vision for science and technology show me one new iit or iim that compares with the first five iits we can go on building things but unless we have the vision unless we have the patience unless we have the personnel to 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 people them uh, it doesn't work and had we waited for our agriculture or our literacy levels to go up we would have completely missed the boat because our literacy levels are still not great and our agriculture is still not great so we would have still been waiting without science and technology and given that science and technology is what took education through doordarshan to the villages it is what took information to the farmers it is today what is taking telemedicine to the last person where there are still no hospitals or if there are little dabbas called hospitals there is still no personnel we are still reaping the fruits of what happened then we are not reaping the fruits of what happened in the last 15 years this is not about gdp who has become much much richer what doesn't matter the poverty is poverty levels are still abysmal people are suffering we saw during covid what has happened we see today 3 years later whether the the plight of the migrant labor is any better and yet you think here we are with institutions that are still world class and these were institutions that were built at a time when we thought we didn't have enough to eat yes we didn't have enough to eat but in order to quickly get enough to eat we needed this science amazing and what do you think that is the role of the science and technology in the sh- in shaping the country today and what do you think that which are the areas that india should focus now i think the core areas remain very much the same uh which is how do you give scientific knowledge to the last person so that they can live a better life they can get better uh productivity they can get better returns for the work they are doing we are still able to take telemedicine for instance i don't know how successful it is i know it is on but that is a field uh violence trying to educate people against hatred is something that we should be using science and technology for instead of creating the kind of more violent and more and more violent and more and more rape culture films and ott uh, productions look at the look at the uh, the success of rocket boys uh, i think more young people have been inspired towards science and towards looking into the lives of homi baba and vikram sarabhai Uh, then then through any number of class book textbooks or any number of documentaries because who watches documentaries so today the entire field of entertainment what the work i do for instance uh, in trying to use the performing arts to talk about fundamental issues of humanity of humanism of of equality of of respect of diversity i think if uh, science can do it if if there can be a flood of programs creative programs imaginative programs using the latest technology so that people get wowed by the technology but the message is something which is humane i think i think this is where it should be going and uh, continuing to see how the life of that last person who still lives without electricity can be improved amazing so but you mentioned about rocket boys i think uh, I don't think that the popular web series Rocket Boys does justice to the life and legacy of the great visionary scientist. I don't think anything can do justice, but it's a huge step forward. It's a huge step forward. The uh, the idea was to bring two iconic figures to the uh, to the mentality of the young today who don't really know it and who only watch things like scam 92 or whatever it was called and think that it is only by scamming or corruption or or becoming a don or becoming a very corrupt entrepreneur that you can get to the top it gave an idealistic uh take on 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 what is possible and i think that i am completely with the rocket boys uh producers in saying that this is not a scientific thing this is not saying that this is all their life is but these were two living people who made a difference and that's a difference that you are living today 
The fact that you have nuclear energy is because of them. The fact that you are watching this is because of them. The fact that there is telephony is because of them. And that you can be honest and good human beings with your own weaknesses and still be amazing people who do amazing things. I think that's the kind of message that needs to go out more and more. And the fact that it is on science is great. I have been wanting to do an OTT series on the women behind the Mars mission and Chandrayaan. I'm still looking for money. So if this program goes to anybody who wants to back that, get in touch with me. Amazing. We wish that this program should go to a lot of lot of people and uh, that there would be people who would be funding you to make that series happen. But one, one last question that I just want to ask you is that uh, these are two people who began with their ideals and they put it up into practice. Homi Jangir Baba and Vikram Sarabhai. And uh, I just want you to let the people know what kind of an impact have they created in the progress of science and technology in India. And the next part of the question is, can you give us some insight about what Vikram Sarabhai's philosophical view of the world was? What is, sorry, I didn't get your last question. Philosophical question. view of the world was. I think the science question might perhaps better be asked to a scientist. All I can say is that every scientist in ISRO that I speak to today still talks of having followed Papa's blueprint from so many years ago. Uh, so therefore, that must be true. And I, I know the same is true with Baba and the whole development of especially nuclear energy, not so much the nuclear bomb, though Baba was a hawk, uh, nuclear energy and what we can still do with it. And all the other uh, uh, manifestations of nuclear energy. Papa had a Leela kind of view of the world. He felt that we were all players here. We all had our part. That it was a wonderful Leela. And that there were ups and downs and there were sorrows and there were complications. But the world was a wonderful place. And each of us had a role to make it more wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Malika, for coming forward and giving us. And one wish to all the scientific community, young people who want to stay back in India. We are also making efforts to asking people abroad to come and contribute back in the country so that we solve the problems. Though many of the people are aspiring to be the CEOs of the Global Monopoly Corporations, but Free Software Movement of India is working hard to get engineers back so that they solve the problems of the bottom line people who are facing problems in the country. One last message for all of them from you, including the scientists working for Chandrayaan, ISRO and all the scientific community from you. We can no longer depend on a situation where we will be given the right things on a platter. The world is fragmented frightened, insecure, and the powers that be play onto it. But all scientists can, can become entrepreneurs to make a difference, to make life easier at many, many different levels, whether it's the technology level or whether it's the level of making it easier to carry water in the rural areas or making it easier to get clean water so that our children don't get sick or going into food technology that actually goes into making a difference in the way people eat or into packaging, into simple things like finding new chemical mixtures and, and, and polymers that perhaps reduce the amount of burden of packaging that we throw into our landfills. There are so many, 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 many different things that engineers and scientists can help in. Come, become the change yourself. Don't wait for institutions. Become an institution yourself. Then we will change this world. Thank you very much. With a very positive note that the current Indian young generation would be pluralistic in their approach, will be away from hate, would be working to solve the problems of the commons for an egalitarian society 
which the, all the scientific community which laid the, all the basis for the science and technological progress of today wished in the dawn of independence would be realized soon and with this note thank you dr malika again for coming on a very short notice and giving us this interview thank, thank you very much